Welcome to Valley Grove Baptist Church, located at 1731 South, U.S. Highway 281 in Stephenville, Texas. We are glad you joined us for our 1030 Sunday morning worship service. If you'd like to learn more about Valley Grove, please check us out at our website at valleygrove.net. Now, join us for the morning worship service already in progress.
this. How big is your God box? How big is your God box? And the second question is, is when's the last time you let it be remodeled? Okay, a couple questions. So how big is your God box? Now I'm not talking about the, you know, where we want to fit God just in, in a box, in a small box, and keep him under control and things like that. I'm talking about the God box of, of our understanding and our experience. You see, all of us have a God box. All of us have a, 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 a comfort level, if you will, or a level of understanding of, of what we've learned about God, what we've experienced with God, and it goes into the, the form of this, this, this box of understanding, this God box. If you will. How big is your God box? When was the last time it was long? When was the last time it was updated? See, the truth is, is, no matter the size, it ought to be undergoing constant upgrade. Constant upgrade. Not because God changes, as, as Debbie talked about, God doesn't change, but, but the way He relates to us does because we grow. The way he relates to us does because our understanding grows. The things he asks of us grows because we grow. And so our God box ought to be constantly being upgraded and remodeled. Now if you think about it, it's been that way throughout history. You think about Adam and Eve and their relationship with God. They walked with God. They talked with God. And they had this wonderful, beautiful relationship with God. But their God box had to be Remodeled and reshaped and changed after sin entered in because you see they they didn't have that understanding of God and so they were scared and they hid from Him. They didn't know that He was a forgiving God, a restoring God. That changed their experience. And you can pick that, I believe, pick any character and get that understanding of the illustration. I think of Jonah. Jonah's God box changed with his experience. He could not conceive and fathom how gloriously loving God is, even to those that weren't in relationship with him. How much God wanted for those that weren't in relationship with him to be in a relationship with him. Jonah's God box changed. He moved. He was We were visiting in Deacon's prayer time before church this morning, and Mike was talking about a uh, study series coming up and, and everything, and I'm not going to steal this thunder, but we're talking about the, the, the infiniteness of God, how God is infinite in all ways. You see, the problem is we have trouble understanding infinity. To say that God is infinite love, that's a hard concept for us, and so we try to fit it within our experiences and our understanding, but oftentimes God will blow the box wide open and cause us to model and reshape it because of new understandings and new experience. I want us to think about those things as we go through today's passage. How big is our God box? How willing are we to let it be remodeled, reshaped, and nothing? Let's pray to you. Praise the Father, we thank you for your word and for this time. We pray, Father, for your Holy Spirit to move among us in a mighty way. Father, that you will teach us Illuminate your word and your truth to us. Father, speak to us. Speak through me. Father, I pray that the words that come out of my mouth, the words that are heard by each person, are your words. So, Father, let that be by the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Have your Bibles turn with me to Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. We're going to look at verses 16 through 19. Isaiah 43, verses 16 through 19. We're just going to look at verses 16 and 17 first, and then we'll come back and grab 18 and 19. Turn there with me. And we won't base it today. Alright, follow along with me. Isaiah 43, beginning in verse 16. This is what the Lord says. Who is the Lord? He is, it is He who made the way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wind. This passage begins with, with, with God's words telling the people of Israel, I am the Lord. This is what the Lord says. And oh, by the way, remember who the Lord is. These are the things that I have done. And it causes us to think back.
back and remember all the good that God has done and all the ways in which he has worked. He, he reminds the nation of Israel, remember it was me who parted the Red Sea. Remember it was me that delivered Pharaoh's armies in, into, uh, into destruction because I halted them from, from searching for you and for hounding you. It was me that stopped Pharaoh's armies. And if you look at the Old Testament as a whole, obviously there, there's one thing that stands out the most. We know that, although there are many beautiful and wonderful ways in which God worked, there's one way in which he marked with such a feast as to be carried on year after year, and that is that of the deliverance. And that's what God's reminding the nation of Israel. And remember, I am the God of deliverance. I'm the one that had delivered you out of slavery and out of bondage. God that gave you freedom. Remember that. Remember the good and beautiful things that I have done. It's very natural for us, and I think good for us during this season of the year to, to pause and do some remembering. And we've kind of crossed over into the new year, so in a way this time has kind of come to close. But I want to take this time, this first Sunday of 2019, to look back on 2018 and just Remember some of the great ways in which God has worked through our lives as a church. We remember very fondly the, the, the way that God worked through us in ministering to and with uh, First Baptist Needle over the, the year and a half and then our partnership uh, lasted. We, we saw some half a dozen trips of, of individuals and families and our church as a whole go down and minister to them and minister with them and minister to neighbors uh, of them. We minister to them through financial resources. We minister to them through prayer, through outreach, through, through presence. And all of it to the glory of God. And I want to tell you, and just, just pause for a moment to understand how beautiful a, a thing that was. How beautiful a testimony it was for the, the body of Christ to come together unselfishly for ourselves, but all to the glory of God. Remembering in a way that praises God for the opportunity we have. But I'm also praising God as a pastor. I praise God for your faithfulness to see it. We remember that in 2018 we had the wonderful opportunity to, to host the Texas Baptist men. And, and when men and women from all over the state and even out of the state came and they, they came here to serve again, sacrifice, and selflessness. They came and they worked thousands of volunteer hours, touching hundreds of families in our county and surrounding counties. They came to give help, and they came to, to give hope, and they, they came to share the love and generosity of Christ. They gave incredible assistance, and we had an opportunity to partner with them in that beautiful time. <coughs> we remember our, our time with El Salvador, our continuing partnership with El Salvador. Do you realize that whenever we started our partnership with Hess, that they had just been an established church for some four months? And now over these years, what God has done through that church there in El Salvador, where they reach over a thousand people each and every weekend, where the continuing partnership that we've been able to be a part of has changed lives, has changed eternities, has changed generations. It is such a difficult place to, to live and survive. And, and so what are ways that blessings can continue and snowball and grow through education, through the salvation of Jesus Christ by increasing their skill sets and their, their job opportunities? Because of that partnership with the church and the school, those things happen. Praise God for, for those opportunities that we had in 2018 to continue that on. We, because of the, the gifts and everything that we were allowed to, to be a part of, they've been able to increase now their, their school to, to go through all the 12th grade. So kids are graduating high school there with a degree and, and the skill set to go on and, and have connected lives and change their families and the directions of their families for generations to come. We've been able to be a part of a continuing church plant there in Brownwood and, 
and, and I don't know if all of you know this, but it's not within financial support. We, we've had ones go and, and man the nursery for them and some of their special and starting uh, services. They've gone and done canvassing in their neighborhoods to invite people to come, and, and the assistance has been very broad and wide. Lives have been changed. Eternity has been changed. We've got to participate in that. And not only those things outside, but we've seen God do many great things inside these walls as, as lives have been changed here. And we've celebrated baptism, that celebrated new life, and also rededicated commitment. We see families come and be restored and be healed. We, we've seen hope restored. We've seen help given. We've seen discipleship and fellowship bless and grow. And God has allowed us to be part of this. And I believe God calls on us to remember those things. Because it is God's hand that has done all those things. And we do well to remember that it is God at work in our lives to accomplish these things. Amen? And I believe that's what he tells the nation of Israel here. Remember, I am your Lord. And this is what I, the Lord, have done before you. So God tells us that. But then it takes an interesting shift. Then the dynamics change. Not just a little bit, but actually quite a bit. Turn back to the Bible with me. Isaiah 43. Let's pick up in verse 18. Verse 16 says, For this is what the Lord says, and he said, and reminds him of what he's done. And then it says in verse 18, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. But do you perceive it, or do you not perceive it? For I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. It is a shift of 180 degrees. God says, remember who I am and the things I have done. And then he says, but forget those things and don't dwell on them. Now, does God really mean that we are to forget everything that he has done? No. No, he doesn't. But what he does say is, listen. I have worked those beautiful and majestic and powerful ways in the past. But don't think that's the only way I'm going to work. Don't think that because of, of the things I've done, you're going to put me in this box of understanding. And everything that I do has to come through that box. Because your finite mind cannot fully understand the infinite God that I have. Therefore, I will not be limited to work just by your understanding. Because I'm going to bring you working in new ways. All of Isaiah, what he's doing here is pointing toward Christ. But what he's telling the nation of Israel is, I'm going to remodel your box. I, the Lord, am not changing. My character and who I am, that remains the same, and it will for all of eternity. But your understanding and your experiencing of me will change and will grow. Will you recognize it? Will you be ready for it? Look at the language Isaiah God uses in telling Isaiah. He says, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Uh, and it is desert streams. There's streams in the desert. This is language of things that we haven't even thought about. These new things. When God tells us, hey, I want to show you something new. We can be certain that it's going to be new to us. He doesn't use it just as, as, as a way of talking to be interested. In coming to Christ, to the nation of Israel, to the world, it was a new thing. It was an increased understanding of, of God's love and His forgiveness and the lengths that He would go to to save the world that He created. So God reminds the nation of Israel. I said, hey, you know what? In the past, I parted the waters. And I showed my power over the waters by separating them. And you came across the Red Sea on dry ground. And you came across the Jordan River on dry ground. But you know what? Now, this isn't about parting the waters. Now I'm going to create those waters Wastelands. I'm going to spring up here. <coughs> you know, in the past, it was manna from heaven, and that's how you were fed. But, but in the future, it's going to be the bread of heaven coming down. And it's going to be a spiritual feeding that, that will cause you to never hunger because it'll be the Holy Spirit dwelling within you. In the past, I freed you from the bondage of slavery. In the future, it's a freedom of the bondage of slavery to sin. No longer will sin have control and domination over you. Whenever I have come and saved you and brought you from death to life, you will have freedom in me. The Holy Spirit will give you that freedom from the power of sin. He tells us, church, he said, those things that I've done in the past, I did those. But 
Are you ready for the new things that are to come? Some things may continue, but there will also be some new things. Will you perceive them? Are you ready for them? Church, it ought to be part of our prayer. It ought to be part of our prayer. Say, Lord, what are you going to do new in me in 2019? What is a, a new place of service, a, a new place of commitment, a new place of dedication, a new area of growth in my life? What is the new that's going to happen to me in this year again? That ought to be part of our prayer. That ought to be part of what we seek. God, what new are you going to do in me? As a church, we strive to be ready for that and to look forward to that. In fact, in our, in our budget process, we, we allocated a line item there for future partnerships for new church plans. In other words, for missions unknown. God, we don't know what all you may bring before us, but we want to be ready. In fact, we, we, we're striving to be ready. We're striving to see it. We're striving to, to when it comes, that, that we're ready to hear you go. And it's not always easy. In, in fact, the, the perception of the new can be very difficult. The perception of, of hey, God is remodeling my box is not always easy. Not only for us, but, but even for those that were closest to Christ during his earthly ministry. Consider John the Baptist. Remember John the Baptist whenever he was in his mother's womb and he encounters Mary uh, pregnant with Jesus, that John leaps in his mother's womb. He's so excited as an unborn baby encountering the unborn Christ that I'm sure he does somersaults. He does flips. He leaps in mother's womb. And, and as he came in, he knew what his purpose was the whole time. He was to be the Elijah for Christ. He was to pave the way. He was to tell the people, get ready for the kingdom of heaven is near. When he sees Jesus, he says, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. John is focused and he, his, his understanding is sure. And yet, and yet at the end, John sends some of his men to Jesus to ask him, are you the one you're supposed to be looking for? Or is it someone else? It was hard for John to fully understand and grasp this, this new that was happening and this change that was coming. It's not always easy. Think of Peter. And Peter there, I mean, he gets it right when Jesus asked him, Who do you say that I am? And Peter says, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter, you're right. That didn't come from you. That came from the Holy Spirit. And just a few moments later, Peter tells Jesus to stop speaking of his death and of his sacrifice. And Jesus has to tell him, get behind the sin. It's hard to recognize the new always. But if we stick with Christ and we keep searching and asking and being ready for what he has planned. Remembering the ways of the past, yes. Remembering, but also forgetting. Remembering that God and His faithfulness and all that He has done and all of His goodness, but also remembering that God is doing new things constantly in us. That God is doing us. That God is inspiring us. That God is stretching us. And God is calling for us to do new things for Him. It's remembering and forgetting. It's trusting and yet also being ready for the new. Remembering we have a God box, but also being willing to let God remodel and update it constantly as He's teaching us, showing us, and walking with us. With the Holy Spirit, we can remember everything. The Holy Spirit, we can trust in God's faithfulness, things in the past, but also trust Him for what is new in the future. We can be ready for what He has in store. Think back to some of the conversations and some of the things that we've done in this year past. We kind of closed the year, and one of the big things we did for the close of the year was the, the, the envelopes of cash as we went out and sought to bless others to the glory of God. You know what? Maybe, maybe this year you take it, you create an envelope for yourself to the glory of God, and you keep it ready for whatever those times have come. Maybe it doesn't take an envelope to, to remind you of that, but now your, your awareness is heightened to look and see God at work and all of your life around you, being ready to join Him. You model your boss that we don't live with blinders on, but we live with our eyes wide open to see what God is doing.
people around us. Maybe God began a new place of service, or maybe it was just a stirring within your heart that new place of service may be in the year ahead. Maybe it's time for you to step out, step up, and serve. Maybe it's you have kind of walled yourself off from that and, and God is saying we need to pray and search for that new place of engagement and service. Maybe God has begun a time of trial and growth and He's calling on you to persevere through, to not give up, to, to hang in there, hold on because of the work that He is doing. And he is at work in all things to bring about good for you and glory for Him. Yes, we remember the faithfulness of God and the things He's done. Not because He has to repeat those things and act only in those ways, but because that tells us and demonstrates the great God He is so that we may be ready for what He has planned in the days ahead. We ought to be, as David talked about, we ought to be growing. We ought to be outgrowing the things that have charged us in the past, growing into the things will challenge us in the future. Philippians 4.13 is a passage that most know very well. There Paul says, it's I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, who strengthens me. And we've talked in the past about the context of that because in the preceding uh, verses there in Philippians 4, Paul talks about, he said, I know what it is to, to be in want and I know what it is to have plenty. I know what it is to be as poor as dirt and to be one of the richest men around. I know what it is to have to have not. I learn to be content in all things, he says. For I can do all things for Christ and his strength. There's a great deal of understanding in there and that, and that God, I believe, is teaching us. One of the understandings is this. Is that with Christ we can do all things. Not that it's a conquering understanding, but it's an understanding of what it means to be with God. I can face all situations, easy or difficult. What I might term good or bad, but they are hard or, or they are smooth sailing. I can face them all through Christ. I can achieve all that God has assigned me to achieve, all the things that He has planned for me to do, all the, the, the tasks that He has assigned to me. I can achieve them through Christ. Through Christ, I can do whatever God asks me to do. I can be whatever God asks me to be. Be it be still, be active. With Christ, I can remember the past and be ready for the new of the future. With Christ, I can let God be my words and not feel like it's been destroyed. How big is your God? 